Hi, I'm Mike, Pokey Tips Mike, and Pokemon Home is finally here! And don't worry, I've got you covered. Today, I'm gonna teach you all about Pokemon Home, how to get it, and of course, how to use it. And since Pokemon Home is multi-platform, it's both on the Nintendo Switch and also on the iPhone and Android phones, I'll be covering all of that too. And I apologize if I look a little tired, it's super late when I'm recording this video. So let's go ahead and jump right into it! Now the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get Pokemon Home, and don't worry, it's super, super simple. On the Nintendo Switch, just go to the eShop. For me, it was right on the first page because it just launched, but if you don't find it right away, just type in Pokemon Home. And it's a free download, so don't worry, you won't have to pay anything up front. And on your phone, it's very similar. On the iPhone, just go to the App Store, type in Pokemon Home, and on Android, go to the Play Store and type in Pokemon Home. It should pop up right away. Now for me, since the game literally just launched as I'm recording the video, I was not able to find Pokemon Home in the App Store. It just wouldn't show up in the search results for me, so I had to go out and find the download page for it. So if you can't find it in the App Store, I'll have the download links to both the iOS version and the Android version in the description for you. So now that you have Pokemon Home, let's go ahead and get this all set up. For me, first I set it up on my Nintendo Switch, I just find it a little easier to do it that way, so I'm gonna do this tutorial where first I show you how to use it on the Switch and all the features you could use on the Switch, and then we'll move over to the phone next. Now the first time you open up Pokemon Home on your Switch, you'll have to first set your language, and then you'll have to read through the Terms of Service and select yes like anybody actually goes through that and actually reads it. And then once you get through all that, you'll meet the Pokemon Researcher Grand Oak. He's basically the owner of the Pokemon homeworld, and his grand dream is to see a completed national Pokédex from all the Pokemon regions put together. And luckily for you, he selected you to help him out with it. Then you get to see Poke Boy, that cute little Pokeball who's supposed to help you out with Pokemon Home, but you have me to do that, so you don't really need Poke Boy. Once you jump through all that, boom, you'll be thrown into the world of Pokemon Home. And then once you're in there, you'll see quite a few options. The first one is Pokemon, which basically lets you look at all the Pokemon you have deposited in Pokemon Home, and you'll notice that you already have one in Pokemon Home. Now when you select that Pokemon option, you'll see all the save data for any Pokemon game that you have on your Switch. It'll show a little bit of information about your character in the game and its stats, and if you choose to, you could go ahead and jump into one of those save files. And from there, you'll see a few things. You'll see what's called the basic box, which is the Pokemon Home box, and you'll be able to see your in-game boxes as well. If it's your first time in that basic box, you'll actually see a special gift Pikachu in there. Mine was in Japanese, which I found kind of cool. But anyway, this is probably the best feature on the Switch version. So by using this box, you could basically transfer Pokemon between your save files pretty easily. And if you want to, you could also bring your Pokemon over from Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee over into Sword and shield, but they have to be in the Galar Pokédex. If they're not in the Galar Pokédex, you won't be able to transfer them in, with a few exceptions. I think off the top of my head, Squirtle, Wartortle, Blastoise, Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Venusaur, Mewtwo, Meltan, and Melmetal. Those you could transfer from Let's Go into Sword and Shield, but everything else that's not in the Galar Dex won't get transferred. And likewise, Pokémon that aren't in Let's Go but are in Sword and Shield can't be put into Let's Go. If you try transferring a Pokémon that's just not in the game, you'll see a little red circle and it'll prevent you from putting it in the game, so no funny business there. Also, another thing to note is once you put a Pokémon from the Let's Go games into Sword and Shield, it can't be transferred back to Let's Go. Now, a few other interesting things you might want to know before we go on to the next thing. Number one, you've probably already noticed this, but if a Pokémon is shiny, its shiny icon does show up in Pokémon Home. You can see this beautiful blue ditto right here and this gray Raboot compared to the regular one. And number two, this one is going to make a lot of Pokemon breeders happy. When you go to release a Pokemon in Pokemon Home, it actually gives you the option to select more than one Pokemon at a time, so you can release boxes and boxes of Pokemon extremely quickly. Normally in Sword and Shield, you have to go one by one by one to release all these Pokemon, but I was able to select all these right here in Pokemon Home, and with a click of a button, we can just go ahead and release 25 Pokemon just like that. I am so glad this is a feature, and I'm also so glad it's free. 
Then right below the Pokemon option, there's the Pokedex option, which is self-explanatory. It basically lets you look at the data for all the Pokemon in the whole entire Pokedex. Now, it's actually set up pretty cool. There's a different category for every region, Kanto, Johto, Hoenn, and so on. And there's even one all the way at the bottom for unknown origins, and the only Pokemon currently in that category right now are Meltan and Melmetal because they originated in Pokemon Go. And I guess they don't want to say that the Earth is a region in Pokemon. Whenever you deposit a Pokemon in Pokemon Home, that Pokedex will slowly get filled up and it gets all the way up to like 890 Pokemon now. There are a lot of Pokemon. So this right here, this is the real challenge. If you can complete that Pokedex, you're a pro. Then right below the Pokedex option, we have four more options. The first one, which looks like a notebook and is called Notebook, lets you basically check out the history of what you've been doing in Pokemon Home and your records, like Pokemon Deposited, Pokemon Withdrawn, and Pokemon Traded, so on. Then to the right of that, we have the Move option, and this is the option that you'll be choosing if you want to transfer your Pokemon from the 3DS using Pokemon Bank to Pokemon Home. Now, you can't access this option unless you pay for the Pokemon Home subscription service. Now, if you want to get in on this subscription plan, it costs $2.99 for just one month, $4.99 for three months, and $15.99 for a full year, all in US dollars. If you're interested in learning how to transfer your Pokemon from the 3DS Pokemon Bank over to the Switch, I'll have a full video up on that very soon. Once it's up, I'll have it linked at the end of this video and in the description of the video as well, so you'll be able to find it easily. Now, moving along to the right, we have the Points option. Basically, by doing activities in Pokemon Home, you'll be able to earn Battle Points, which you'll be able to send back to your Pokemon games. Currently, you can only send Battle Points back to Sword and Shield, you can't send them to Let's Go, because Let's Go didn't have Battle Points. And then finally, to the right of that, you'll have your options menu where you can check out some information like your username, support ID, see what level your plan is, and change the music volume if you want to. Last but not least, at the bottom, you have the Nintendo eShop option, which, like we discussed before, allows you to buy that subscription plan to Pokemon Home to get all the features. And that, my friends, is the Nintendo Switch version. Honestly, it's kind of bare bones. Sure, you can move your Pokemon around between Let's Go or even your 3DS games to the Switch, but the real fun features they're all on your phone. So let's move over to the phone version next. So now let's talk about the mobile version. So assuming you've already downloaded it to your phone, go ahead and log in with the same Nintendo account that you had on your Switch. Then it'll ask you for a nickname and it'll give you the option to set a little icon for yourself, which is pretty cool because all the characters there are the past protagonists from previous Pokemon games. I think this is a pretty neat touch. You can make yourself look like Red, you can make yourself look like Gold, Brendan from Ruby and Sapphire, although I'm slightly disappointed they didn't let us choose Crystal or the Emerald or Platinum redesigns for the characters, but that's whatever. So once again, you'll meet up with Professor Grand Oak, but this time, he'll give you a choice just like regular Professor Oak. Hmm, gets me wondering who this guy is. But he gives you the choice of choosing a starter Pokemon, Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle. Now something that makes this really cool is all three of these starter Pokemon have their hidden ability. And if I were you, I would choose either Bulbasaur or Squirtle, because you could already get Hidden Ability Charmander and Sword and Shield. And then after that, you'll be thrown into the better version of Pokemon Home. So let's see what we've got going on here. So if you tap your character's name, you'll see you'll be able to change the name and that icon if you want to change it in the future. You'll be able to see that Records and Notebook menu again, and you'll see a big white thing that just says Pokemon. Now this opens up the whole Design Your Room menu where you could place stickers everywhere, you could put up special wallpapers, it's pretty cool. You can really design this to be however you want. Now also from this main menu, you'll be able to look at challenges. Basically, the game asks you to do certain things and they'll give you rewards like battle points and some stickers and stuff for that. You could add some friends to trade with and you could also check Pokemon Masters news. When we swipe to the left over here, we'll actually be in the whole trade menu. And this is why I like the mobile version so much more than the Switch version. Here you could do four different types of trades. You could do Wonder Box, which is basically like Wonder Trade, Surprise Trade from the main series Pokemon games. You'll put a Pokemon inside of a box, you'll come back a little later and it'll be traded for something random. So let's try depositing my Sobble here, and the game crashed. Yeah, that's the one bad thing about the app. The app likes to crash a lot. Okay, we're back, and I guess it went through and put my Sobble up on the Wonder Box. Now, you'll see, if you did not pay for a membership, you only get three slots in the Wonder Box, but if you pay for the premium membership, you could put up to ten Pokemon in the Wonder Box at once, which is pretty cool. Then, right below that, there's the GTS Global Trading Station. 
which I'm sure if you guys have played a previous Pokemon game, you're very familiar with this, but you could basically place a Pokemon on the GTS and then ask for somebody to trade you something else that you want in return. It's pretty cool, especially on this app. You could just set it and forget it, and then eventually somebody will trade you the Pokemon that you want as long as you're not doing a ridiculous trade. Don't put a Rattata up and ask for a Mewtwo and expect that trade to happen. Then next we have Room Trade, which is kind of weird. It's basically just like the Wonder Box where you're trading with a random person, but instead of it being a trade with anybody anywhere in the world, it's only with people in the room with you. And then finally at the bottom we have Friend Trade, which is self-explanatory. You add somebody's friend code and then you can trade with them. Something I really like that they did here is they show the total amount of trades done, and it's absolutely insane. Almost 65,000 trades were done, and this app has only been out for a few hours. And they could also see what the most frequently traded Pokemon are on the GTS. Right now, Pikachu's number one, which makes sense since the game gives you a free Pikachu. Litten's number two, and then we have Ditto at number three. Again, Ditto makes a lot of sense. Everybody wants those foreign Dittos. And you can see we have a lot of starter Pokemon, a lot of legendary Pokemon, and even Magikarp in the top 50. And then over here we also have the most popular Pokemon, Litten's number one, Rowlet's number two, makes a lot of sense since now we could get those in Sword and Shield, and Zamazenta is at number three, with Zacian at number four. All right, and now let's check out the final tab, Pokemon, which is basically your same thing. You could check out your Pokemon that you have in the box. I really like it on the mobile version though, a lot better than it is on the Switch because it just feels a lot more intuitive here. You could play with your Pokemon a little bit, poke them to get them to move, see their stats, moves, natures, it just looks really, really good on the phone. I think they did a fantastic job designing this. And then at the bottom, you have so many ways to sort your Pokemon. Newest 30, Pokedex number, level, height, weight, HP, you have a lot of options. So my friends, with that, you now know all about Pokemon on home. Now that I have it in hand, honestly, I think this is a pretty cool app. I like having all these features on my phone. It's really convenient. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're new, because I'm going to be doing plenty more videos on Pokemon Home. There is so much to cover here. And in the comment section, let me know which starter Pokemon you chose. Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle. My friends, thank you so much for watching the video, and I'll be seeing you in the next one, after I get some sleep.